Hello everyone, so today is Wednesday, it's noon time and it's a time to have a real talk with JT. Today I have a very special guest over here, <coughs> uh, a guy, a mortgage guy, a guy who does the mortgages the different way, the Islamic way, probably the only way how to really get our brothers and sisters into a home ownership, the guy who everybody knows when it comes to Islamic financing, the guy with the guide, Semi Kabir for Guidance Residential. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Well, you know, it's always a pleasure to have you over here. Thank and you. so, for those of you who knows, I don't have to really give an introduction, you know, but for those of you who doesn't know, you know, for many Muslims, not for all the Muslims, but for many Muslims actually, to buy a home, it's, it's really a big task. Because if you don't buy it cash, then you have to go for a mortgage, right? And you cannot go for a mortgage if there is an interest in the ball. Yep. So actually many people, they never buy. They just keep on renting. And they never get the home ownership. So, I mean, Sammy, you know, tell us something about yourself. What's your background? How have you been mortgages? Why mortgages? Why guidance residential? First of all, John, thank you for having me. I think this is a wonderful platform that you have come up with. And uh, this actually gives an opportunity for many of the brothers and sisters and the Muslims and as abroad uh, to get to understand uh, what is Islamic finance. So, my background is uh, for 15 years I've been involved in mortgage industry uh, overall real estate. Uh, when I first started my career after IT back in 2002, not too far away from your office, Prudential Douglas Elliman, I okay. used to work with Donna Reardon. Nice. Um, after a, uh, about a year, I switched to mortgage. So I've been doing a uh, so conventional I mean, mortgage. So you just like the numbers better? Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, I thought that, you know, um, better than real estate, I could enjoy better with the numbers and the mortgage and finance because in IT I was also involved in the banking side of the infrastructure nice. in doing database administration. Okay. So I started to like it and uh, conventional mortgage was, I was involved, uh, I was the VP of sales with Olympic Mortgage, many of you know. So. Uh, I did not know much about Islamic finance. So 2008, um, I got introduced to Guidance Residential um, and I wasn't convinced. I thought that it's just like the same thing. Took same me, story, different name, right? Yeah, yeah, different name. So it took me about three years to revisit again. And uh, since then, it's a history since 2011. And so, you know, it's interesting you said that because I think before 2008 or 2006, there wasn't really Islamic finance at all in, in the U.S., right? There was, actually. Uh, HSBC uh, was doing a program called Murabaha. Uh, Murabaha in Arabic term, in English it, it means uh, buy and sell for a profit markup. HSBC was the only known uh, U.S.-based bank who was offering halal option for home mortgage, but that was backed by a Saudi uh, prince who was actually funding it because Islam doesn't allow you to sell a debt. So when you're taking a loan from a bank, this cannot be sold in a secondary market. So HSBC had to portfolio. So if they had to portfolio, they needed a deep pockets. So 2007, uh, the, the investor decided to pull out from investing in real estate in the USA. Because the market, that's the market when trend. exactly. Yeah. So since 2007, there wasn't any. But guidance has been existing since 2002. Wow. So uh, then the alternative um, way to go, either HSBC or something else, and uh, people realize that guidance has been around, and uh, and we've been doing mortgages for, uh, and serving the. U.S. Muslim community for the last 15 years. So, I mean, there was just a tremendous opportunity because there was, like you said, was only two players and pretty much no player afterwards in that field. So it was a great opening for guidance residential, I guess, right? Yes, absolutely. Now, 
prior to guidance, there are a lot of other organizations, I must say, that tried to do Islamic finance, and they did their best to follow uh, certain uh, Islamic uh, contracts. But they were not successful because in order to practice the Islamic finance in a non-Islamic country where the banking is regulated by the federal government, mm -hmm. you come up with a lot of uh, challenges. And many of those organizations actually faced those challenges. So that's why you hear that, oh, um, it's Islamic, but you are the same. You know, it's it's the same bank. It's just, just a know, different name. Just right? a different name. Uh, you just go around and circumvent the same thing. You don't. Uh, it's still an interest, but you call give it a different name. But those are the misconceptions that arose because of those challenges that these other companies faced. But since 1997. Guidance is actually a family-owned um, company. We are worth about $5 billion company uh, based in Middle East, not only in America. They decided to spend the time and the money and the effort to come up with a real solution. So it took us about three years uh, through doing a lot of research and development. We spent about $25 million we worked with 18 different law firms to get a real solution from beginning to the end, just doing a pure play in Islamic finance industry and be able to provide and offer something that's very authentic and backed by scholars, not just any kind of scholars, scholars who specialize in Islamic finance, uh, who have spent 20, 30 years uh, only in this subject of their life and they put their name and these are the scholars very well known globally like Mufti Taki Usmani, Sh uh, Sheikh Nizam Yaqobi, uh, Dr. El Ghari. Um, many of these scholars globally um, who tell you that in which country how you should perform a Islamic finance in that country and which program you should use and follow because Islam gives you a broad... Well, why why every country is different? Is it based upon <coughs> the, the laws and the regulations or just ethnicity? Why is that? Well, before I answer that, I must clarify that Islamic finance, there's no such thing as Islamic finance. There's a Sharia law for Muslims to follow, right? And then we probably will talk about later on what is Sharia. Many of us know it's a way of life. So Sharia has to be followed with the law of the land. So if you want to do a finance or any kind of a transaction and that happens to be a financial transaction, it needs to be intact with the Sharia law, not compromising it, and at the same time following the law of the land. So combined together is the result is Islamic finance. So in Islam, many of us are, are my background is from Bangladesh. I come from Bangladesh. Uh, many of our South Asian uh, countries, m most countries, when we go to school and colleges, what do we learn about Islam? What I know that I haven't seen in my country that in the college and schools in curriculum there's something called Islamic economics. Yeah. We did learn about uh, the stories of our prophet and you know the history uh, of Islam but what about the Islamic economics it's not taught so many of us many Muslims don't know that economics when you talk about uh, stocks when you talk about shareholdership when you talk about profit margin it's not always uh, enticed with interest First, we need to understand what is interest and what becomes the riba between the transactions. So going back to my point is the scholars who would dissect a country's laws and regulations in the field of finance, and they will see that if you want to practice uh, Islamic finance in that country, what kind of a Islamic product you should use, a contract base. Mainly to, to keep it very simple, 
There are three types of uh, contract that can be used. One is known as murabaha, which means buy and sell. You buy the asset, which is the house. It's basically like a type of loans, sort of, right? Right. So okay. you buy the house for 400000 and you add $200,000 profit. You as the bank. Right. Okay. Then you sell this house as a bank to the consumer for 600000 That's a profit markup. There is another contract which is known as ijara, ijara tul waktina, meaning uh, lease to own. You can lease a car. Similarly, you can lease a house. But as a bank, if you are going to lease it to the consumer, you need to be the owner of the house. To own it first. Right. So when was the last time you've seen a bank owns a house and leases to a consumer here in America? You haven't. Oh, very, very. Right? Probably never. No. And the third contract is through partnership, which is known as Musharaka. Now, there are different types of partnership. When we talk about partnership, we always understand uh, business ventureship, which is known as Shiraka Blak. That means that, you know, you profit and share is... Uh, profit and loss is shared equally or 40, 50, whatever you agree on. But there's one kind of uh, contract is called Shirakatul Milk, meaning declining co-ownership, where one owner uh, or partner will buy the share from the other owner over a period of time. So once you buy him off, then you're 100% owner. And that is the contract is it, it's more viable, it's practical, and also scalable in a way that you can introduce the investor in this contract. So that's why Musharaka is widely known to be used for Islamic finance. Now, this is not available. Uh, I mean, any other contract cannot be used according to the scholars here in America because of the banking so just, system. Just the only, the last one you, you mentioned, right? That's the only one can be used. But in some other countries, if the banking system is not heavily regulated by the government and the banks are allowed to own a home, then they could use the other contracts. Okay. So that's what the scholars are there for. I'm not a scholar, by the way, but scholars will tell you that this is the program that you must use. So if anybody wants to do Islamic finance, they first need to seek guidance from the scholars first before they start. So I guess, you know, really it's, it's, it's the knowledge is the key. <coughs> knowledge and education, you know, be, be self-aware of, uh, of everything and anything, especially when it comes to your life and, you know, financing your home, right? Right. Which I think is a, it's a huge, I, I think, and you write on the money because you know, many, many people, they don't even know, you know, what you just mentioned, different type of products and how it works. By the way, it was it was so nicely explained. It was very simple. I got it right in there, you know. So I really appreciate that for that. So, I mean, what's the real difference? Because I know you guys call it a profit, mm -hmm. and the bank is calling it uh, an interest. Right, but you also give a percentage to it, right? It's like a six percent, five percent, whatever the rate is. So I mean, what's the real difference between that? Now, before I answer that, how you calculate the payment, right? Yes. So John, before I get into that, I will start my explanation with a simple example, like a story. Now, let's say you and I were two brothers. We have inherited a property from our family. So it's a house, single family house. Now you are 50%, I'm 50% owner. We equally own the property. You decided to buy my share from me and you want to live in the house fully for yourself. Forever. Right. So you tell me, Sammy, I want to buy you up. Okay, John, great. How much are you going to pay me? Let's go find out how much is the house worth. Let's say it's $100,000. Now you need to give me $50,000. But you don't have that $50,000 to pay me. So what option do you have? I wish it would be a house for $100,000. <laughs> so if you don't have the money, your first option is you go to a bank and you loan $50,000. And you pay interest on that borrowed $50,000. Just pay you off. You and you house. pay me out, but you have a loan on your shoulder of $50,000. That's something that you want to avoid anyway. 
So what's the other option you may have? Let's say you want to have an agreement with me that you will buy me out slowly. You need some time to pay me. Let's say you and I agree that in 10 years, with equal payments, 120 payments, you will buy me out. Okay, great. But while you're buying me out, every single month you're paying a installment to buy my share and your share is increasing. But aren't you also using my portion of the equity of the house that I still own? Let's say you bought me 10%. I still own 40% of the house, which you are using because you took the whole house and I'm no longer in the house. I don't live in the house anymore. I have my hut on, the, on my 40% of the ownership. So if I tell you, John, you are going to pay interest to the regular bank as a, as a loan, as interest on the loan you took, but why don't you pay me a profit for using my share of the house that you are using? Why don't you pay me rent for the 40%? Now the next month, if my share is 30%, you pay me rent on the 30% of my share. So that is not considered interest because I did not give you a loan to begin with. We are owners in the house. So if we are owners in the house and you are buying me out and you are paying me a rent for using and utilizing my portion of the ownership, that is not called RIBA because RIBA is when you take a loan, you have an agreement to take a loan from somebody, you literally borrow money, and you pay extra on that money. But here in this example, you did not, I did not give you cash. Mm -hmm. We already owned it, we, right, we had the equity. So that's the difference between us and the conventional banks. We are not a bank, first of all and foremost. Guidance Residential is not a bank. We do not loan money. We are a private equity firm that we, where we become partner with you on the property. Mm -hmm. And you buy us out, and while you're buying us out, you pay us a utilization fee for using the portion of our property. But so how is the utilization fee calculated? Because let's say if regular mortgage loan is 5%, Right, you know, from my experience, you know, the guidance or any Islamic finance is generally speaking is going to be higher than that, right? But how do you guys calculate that fee? The fee is calculated for what is called benchmarking. Okay. If you were to go to a bank and borrow money and pay interest for that example that I gave, if you're going to pay the bank a certain percentage of a profit, whether it's as an interest, but at the end of the day, it's a profit. You could pay me similar profit, little more or less. So that means that it should be less. It should be my, my brother. You charge, you charge me less. If we are family members, it's a different story, right? Now, here we actually try to be as close to as much it would cost you. Now, we cannot be like the regular bank. We are not federally funded. But why not? We are not taking any loans on 2% from the federal government and then selling it on the market for more profit or so who, interest. So who, who, who's financing it? It's our own funds. Okay. Guidance Residential, as I told you, uh, it's a family. Exactly. Um, I can give you the background of the family. They have um, offshore, um, um, as I said, uh, a private equity firm. Um, the company is worth over five billion dollars. So we used our use our money. We finance the house, and then we introduce an uh, investor who would buy our share, and then we liquidate our money, and then we finance again more because Islamic finance, like I said previously, it has to be scalable. And if, you can, if it can be scalable, that's when you can continuously serve the so community. People. Right. right. So, I mean, so what you're saying, so it's, 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 many, it's many ways similar in a way, like a traditional finance, 
but there's little tweaks and vessels to it which you know regular banks they don't really have it right because they don't have the Islamic aspect of it in mind of course but like a traditional banks you know you you, you close on the loan you service it for some time and then you will resell it to the to the market right so I mean how how is the investors you know buying it really now when we went to Freddie Mac at the beginning, back in 19, you know, 1997 and between 2002, um, Freddie Mac, uh, we approached and we said that we are not going to loan money to homeowners. We are going to buy the house with the homeowner and we're going to be co-owners. Partners. Partners. And then we want you to take that contract that we signed with them, which is not a promissory note, which is not a loan, loan agreement, which is a partnership based on Islamic uh, faith, and we want you to buy it as an investor, and we're going to sell it to you, we're going to liquidate our funds, and then we go and help somebody else, we're going to sell it to you. Freddie Mac says, are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Banks are not co-owners with homeowners. We put liens on the property. We, you know, we sign a promissory note, we buy a promissory note. So we went back and forth. Uh, <laughs> after three years, uh, finally we got it approved and, and they agreed. And we are now the largest Islamic financing provider in the USA. Uh, we have financed over $5 billion already in the last 15 years. We served about 18,000 homeowners. Wow. Right now we are operating in 28 states, including New York. Just pretty impressive. And it's everything uh, within how many, you said 15 years? Yes, we've been 15, over 15, 15 years. years. Wow. Okay. I mean, uh, what is the promissory note and why Why you don't have the promissory note? Let's say, you know, you, you partner with me, I bought a home, I, I get a mortgage, uh, whatever financing from you, and then I just can't pay. I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay you. How are you going get, to get your money back? My favorite subject you're talking about promissory note uh, promissory note is what is everybody should know when you are taking a loan on a house from the bank what you sign is called promissory note this promissory note has so much in it if a regular person would realize they would never go to a bank you like the good stuff in it <laughs> like it's the promissory note let's say that it gets you by the neck you mean like foreclosure? Foreclosure. Default. This promissory note gives the bank the right to foreclose on your property and go after your other assets if they can recoup the loss. This promissory note tells you that if you cannot pay monthly payment, they will accumulate the total, charge you 5% of the late fee. Next month they will accumulate the total again, 5% on the entire total compound interest. This promissory note goes on. If there is an eminent domain, the government would like to, or the city would like to buy your property, and they want to build something, and they're paying you less money than what you owe to the bank, then... You're still liable to pay them. First of all, you are forced, because the city is yeah, taken. Yeah, yeah, There's no yeah. law to protect you, yeah. so you're going to have to give it up. And then again, the bank also is sitting and waiting for you to give them the difference. Where are you going to find the money from if you don't have it? So they have the right to go after you. You have 401k, you have retirement funds, you have other properties under your wife's name or family. <laughs> they have everything. So they get you by the neck. That's called promissory note. I can go on, but it's very uh, disturbing to realize that how much of a risk that one can take when buying a house through a riba based mortgage system and that's why it's so easy with them it's very easy for you to go you know we always hear that oh conventional banks is so easy i go they don't ask me anything and they will they will give you the mortgage they will give you more sure they will give you that's the business that's why they're there for we don't have those let me tell you the benefits and why we say it's a peace of mind when you finance with Islamic finance. So what's, the, what, what's the difference? Let's say I, I can afford to pay the loan back. Let's start with the first. Okay. It starts with the monthly payment being defaulted. So you cannot make the payment. We will contact you. We will send you mail. And the administrative cost will never be more than $50. 
So because you default, so there's no late fees. We will charge no you the maximum fifty dollars, maybe forty dollars, thirty dollars, depending on our cost from our servicer. That's all we're gonna charge you. We'll not charge you typically five percent that the regular bank charges. That's number one. Number two, if you're late continuously second month, it's another fifty dollars. It's not compound interest like the regular banks. Let's say you cannot make the payment. We try to work with you. We wait until you get a job, or you know you're able to start making the payment. You are just behind the monthly payment. You don't have this seventy, eighty thousand dollar total monthly payment. You have to, you need to make first, and then you start the normal payment. It doesn't work like that. You sort of you not know, going to be able to get shop for the people with a regular mortgage loan. Right, right. it's growing, growing, growing. Right, it's it's very hard. Now the second phase. Let's say. We see that the homeowner is not able to make payment, and we decide to part away from the partnership. So we need to sell the house <clears throat> to recoup our remaining equity that we own and give back the equity of the customer. Have you ever seen the regular bank when they sell Never. that they give money back to the homeowner? No, absolutely not. Let's say you cannot make the payment, but the house is selling for more, and we only have our equity share of hundred thousand dollars, but it's sold for three hundred. The two hundred thousand dollar goes back to you with guidance. So that's how it works. But let's switch the point. Let's say there is a loss, three hundred thousand dollars mortgage, Minus. but it's sold for two hundred thousand. Hundred thousand dollar, we never will come after you. It will be in our book of loss. Regular bank will come after you for the hundred thousand dollars. Negative judgment on you, and it will remain, right? So that's the difference with the foreclosure. So you do have a peace of mind. So I mean, what you say is, it's not only a good prime for Muslims for the Islamic, from the Islamic perspective, but even for for everybody. It's for everybody. By the way, this is not for Muslims only. This this uh, our program is available for everybody in America. Wow. I mean, you know, we have a question. We we have about three minutes, you know, to go. Sure. Uh, I think we have a lot more to cover. We, I might have to ask you to, to come again and be sure. on the show one more time. But I actually have a question over here from Peter Carly. Uh Peter actually he's a mortgage banker himself. Oh, nice. Okay, but he he practices the regular financing. Okay. No, not the regular. So Peter, thank you, thank you very much for asking the questions. And here the question, do you have anything similar to a no tax return option? That's the first question. The second question is, uh, hi, thanks for sharing. Why is it okay to earn money, a profit, the way that you are structuring the deal versus it not being okay charging a traditional interest? Your method appears to be work around. So that's, I, I think we, we covered it. But can you can you simplify it for him the second question? Sure. First of all, Peter, uh, we don't have a no doc program. We right there. we actually uh, look into the documents. So unfortunately, we don't have that. We used to have it back in 2008 or 9, um, but we don't have it. And the other question is why it's a work work around. All the Abrahamic faiths, Christianity, Judaism, and Muslim, it tells you that do not charge interest to your brothers. You cannot charge money for more money. Let me give a simple example. If I give you one dollar, and you, or if you give me five dollars, and you want me to give you six dollars back, what is it for? That extra one dollar has no intrinsic value because money, that five dollar, has no intrinsic value. Money cannot buy money, but money can buy something as a return. So money is way of valuing something. So that's little bit more conversation I would love to go more but uh, if it's okay I can I mean send me some information actually it's, it's it's right below so I mean if you guys have any questions you know send me he's a great guy you know he's very responsive they can reach you sure Sammy Kabir you can um, Facebook uh, Islamic Finance Sammy Kabir or you can also look me up Sammy Kabir on Facebook if you don't find Google Sammy Kabir uh, is going to come up, you can also go to our website, guidanceresidential.com. Our office is right here in Jamaica, 171-21 Jamaica Avenue. Our team is sitting here to help the community and everybody else. 
One more question, if I can, Sammy. Uh, this is from uh, Asif Kadir, uh, my brother from Pakistan. He's from Washington, D.C., a uh, realtor, very powerful guy, great guy. Uh, he has a question. Do you have uh, to conform conform to Fannie, Freddie, and running guidelines? Yes, of because course. our investor is Freddie and Fannie, so all the uh, programs that are available conforming and jumbo with Fannie and Freddie, uh, we have them available. We are also looking to introduce uh, super jumbo programs, most likely the second or third quarter of this year. And can you do FHA? That was another question. FHA, no, we are not able to, but we have a better program than FHA. We have minimum 3% down payment. We have uh, uh, home possible programs are available, uh, many of you who know, and those programs are much better than FHA. Uh, we don't have PMI structure payment, so the monthly payments are lower, closing costs are lower. And by the way, our programs are similar 30 year, 20 year, 15 year. We can help you do a purchase or a replacement program, which is known as refinance. If you are with a regular bank, you'd like to switch over, um, we can help you, we can pay off your bank. Uh, we also do for investment properties, uh, a lot of investors buy and sell. We can do that. We don't do any rehab program, no construction. No total gains. Right. Uh, we do uh, short sales, uh, you know, if the house is inhabitable uh, with a minor repair, we can, can finance can, them. We can do that. So I think uh, I think I will I will try to work so we to have him again on the show because I see there's a lot of stuff which we didn't cover. Right. I right. know he's very busy, but you know, we'll I'll, I'll try to fit him in. So, well, Sammy, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. It was very informative, uh, guys. If you have any more questions, you can follow Sammy. His information should be right below. If you get any questions, please let us know. <laughs>